Afternoon YouTube, hello internet, um, fellow modellers, it's that time again. Um, a little, I'm a couple of days late with my Meet the Fleet. Uh, quick update really, that's the reason why I'm a bit late. Um, a couple of weeks ago I showed the Vectron, the new Vectron from Fleischmann, the PKP Cargo. Um, which was a rather nice looking locomotive. It's item number 739377 and I'm not sure if you remember if you saw the video if not go and have a look at my page um, it's, it's, it's not it's not really a formal video it's just a video of me moaning about a locomotive that I paid money for that doesn't work uh, I sent it back to the guys that I bought it off of obviously it's not their fault it was manufacturer's problem but I'm not the only person who's been having trouble with this loco I, I, I got a replacement loco a couple of days later after that and did the same thing and that's when I made the video on the replacement one um, and I was a bit frustrated if I'm honest because it's like 200 quid loco, it's not it's not cheap. And so I sent it back and they sent out another two. And um, would you believe it? Exactly the same things happened to the other two as well. So they've also been returned. So that's four Fleischmann Digital Electric sound locomotives. All got the same problem, all got the same fault. What can I say? Been collecting Fleischmann since the early 80s. And this is the first time I sent one loco back of the same type four times on the truck. So I'm really disappointed. And um, I've, I've been on Facebook page, on, on Fleischmann's Facebook page, posted my video. And all they've done is said they'll send it to the technical guys. So there's not been any re response to it. I just think they've failed to support the customers really. And the customer support from Fleischmann is ridiculously rubbish in England. You have to put everything through Gauge Master and all they're interested in Gauge Master is profit. They're not interested in customer service at all. They actually supply um, the models to all the other outlets in the UK. Have to buy their Fleischmann through them. Because Fleischmann won't deal with anybody else. So Fleischmann, if you're out there, you're in trouble. Because I'm going to be calling you shortly. And you're going to get some stick from me on the internet as well. Uh, I'm really disappointed. I've been a fan of yours for so many years and now I'm pretty disappointed. So that's the end of my morning. Um, on, a, on a brighter note, I've been waiting for a new locomotive which arrived this morning. And finally, they've built a locomotive that meets their standards, or my standards at the very least. And as you can see in front, we've got this National Express 1110. Um, which is a superb model. It absolutely is fantastic. I've run it in for an hour. Um, on its own at different speeds both directions carrying various loads so it's well and truly running and I've got to say I was that impressed that I'm thinking of ordering a second one and um, replacing my old 110 that you can probably see going past well there's a couple of 110s in the background going past uh, before we end the video I'll, I'll show you the both locomotives closer because they were both, well one of them was digital and one was analog converted to digital which was, uh, in fact it was, it, it's the um, original Fleischmann FMZ digital not the proper, so I've had it re-chipped um, but they, it still runs superb but having seen how this National Express runs and how smooth it is and the sound chip that's in it is absolutely amazing so I'm actually considering just buying another one of these and replacing the um, the upper body of my old loco and retiring the engine because it's getting old now 1980 something I bought it 85 86 but anyway let's get back to this National Express 110 probably oh actually sticks on the uh, <laughs> I just I was just going to click up the sound on it it's probably the best um, electric loco sound wise I've actually heard of Flot Fleischmann as you just heard that was the announcement number seven but it's got a full um, a full sound um, suite on board and it's fantastic so let's fire up the engine so you can hear it and up on my quacking So that's function one. That gets the engine up and running. 
and function two is a fantastic horn absolutely incredible function three the worst horn I've ever heard sound like a dog biting a squeezy toy what's that all about chronic <laughs> number four it's even worse Sounds like a dog barking a squeaky toy and he's bitten the squeaky bit out of it. <laughs> Pretty shocking. But the first one, superb. Hope it does sound like the original. I've no idea because I've not seen the original going, but um, function five. It's the air compressor. Um, function six is inertia. You're not going to say anything from that, only when it works, it slows down from being its top speed down to a, a reduced speed to make it safe. And function seven that you've already heard. Is the announcement. Number eight, conditioning fan. Very responsive, kicks in straight away. And number nine is shunting gear. Obviously it only works when you're actually when it's moving, so you're not going to see that function working. Function 10 is turns the noise off or the sound off, whichever you want to call it. And function 11, it's one of the light functions. So um, it, what it does is if if you're um, loco, let me just pull it forward a bit and you'll, you'll see what I'm on about. Listen to this fantastic sound. Let's turn it the right way, shall we? Had it lined up, it's going to be a couple of coaches up in a minute, but we'll do that shortly. So, let me just follow it along. I'm just going to turn my light off here so that you'll, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So, function 10, as you can see, um, the red lights are actually showing the reverse direction of the loco. If you turn the switch on, it switches them lights off. So they don't reflect against the coat, which is pretty cool. Function 11, that does exactly the same, only with the front lights. So if you're if you're pushing it or pulling it obviously each one reflects each one and then 11 i'm gonna to have to move the loco for it to work it's it's breaking inertia let me turn it back so it's come the other way and flash will do this really well i think let's just get it going you can hear it's starting to squeal now the brakes are squealing as if it's going around the corner or slowing down to stop which are quite light. And then number 14 is the whistle. Fox standard whistle. Let me pop my light back on so we can give a quick flash there. Um, but it, it lights it up so you can see the colour. And you can see the actual colour looks really nice. It's got Nash Express emblem on the side of it with the uh, with the local number on the bottom, which is the 110 469 stroke four. And on the front and the rear of the loco, um, it's got an X for short for National Express, which I find really good. And if the camera's picking it up, you might just be able to pick up the little screw inside the glass window there. A bit of a shame really, they didn't put a bit of plastic on the back of that metal so you couldn't see the screw or, or hide the screw a little bit. But it's what it is. Um, as you can see, the pantographs, they actually flick up like we do on all Fleischmann. And it's a rather nice um, metal container on the top, uh, containing all the electrics and all the parts for the, uh, for the pantographs, which is pretty cool. Um, it's been converted to Profi couplers, as all my stuff's on Profis. But uh, anyway, let's just crack on further down. Right, number 15 is the fan. It's, um, it's the cooler fan. One was The other one was an air conditioning fan, this one's a cooler fan. Uh, this is to cool the engine. And then we've got number 16. 
Rapitense brakes, it's the handbrake. And then number 17, there's a couple of noises. That's coupling up. And then number 18, that's uncoupling. Then number 19, that's a directional brake, which you'll hear when the loco is moving, so it's not going to be playing now. 20 is the motor, it's the transducer on the motor, which is actually working, which is again pretty good. And then we've got Function 21, which is the sandbox. Pretty standard on all our locos. And then there's another two functions, there's 22 and 23, which increase or decrease the sound of the motor, of, of the locomotive sound on board. So as you can see, it's quite comprehensive. Um, and it makes a change to have 22 and 23, so you can adjust the sound on the loco, so it's not super, super loud like a lot of them are when they're first put on the, on the, on the loco. You have to do it with the CV inside the loco normally. So all in all, this is a fantastic loco, and not just sound-wise, but also uh, when it runs, it's very, very smooth indeed. I'm going to run it back very slowly, which is what I tried to do with my PKP cargo, and it wouldn't work at all, but this is so slow and smooth, it's absolutely fantastic. Now these National Express, it, it, it comes in a set, um, but the, they've actually released the loco, but not the coaches yet. I've actually ordered the whole complete set, but as of yet, obviously they're incomplete. So uh, hopefully, when they come, I will have them as well. So for the time being, I've just got these hooked up to some silver fish, the old DB ones from quite a long, quite a few years ago. But you can see this is pulling really slowly. This is on like two kilometres, is what I like to try to do with my PKP last time. And just kept stalling on the track as if it was dirty. But this is perfect. I mean, for doing close-up videos and stuff like that, when you're showing a loco that's that's um, in immaculate, this is this is sort of this is what I don't mind paying for this type of thing because this is this is what you want for your money. And I, I can I can run this locomotive at shows as it just did a little jig there. That's probably some a muck on the track. Um, but it, it, I've run it in and it's been perfect. It's the first time I've had a jig on it at all. So it's definitely this, this inside track. It's not been used this morning. Uh, I've run it on the centre track and that's been cleaned, so maybe I should have cleaned this track first, but I haven't done. It's been a week since I've, I've run anything down it. But um, all in all, I'm really happy with this locomotive, it's just fantastic. It's very smooth, all the sound functions on it are great. I listen to the sound file, you can go on the Flyspring website, click on this loco, and there's something else they've started doing. There's, there's a, a sound bite on there that you can listen to, and it and it'll give you um, it'll give you uh, a, a bit of an insight into what the sound of the locomotive is like before you buy it. I hope they do this in the future with all the rest of the locos that they bring out that have got sound. So then you can choose whether you want to invest that money into that loco, and I think that's a great idea, really. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it's something they'll take on board. I have requested that they do that. They've done it with this loco. I think they've done it with one other as well. But I'm kind of hoping that they'll do it with other locomotives because it's just a great idea. And it gives you value for money because then you know, oh, I don't want to buy that loco. It sounds pants. It's not what I want in my fleet or whatever. 
but uh, obviously this is just I'm, I'm really happy and content with this if all my locos run as smooth as this in fact I was that impressed like I've said I've already spoke to um, to my dealer and asked my dealer if they would um, if I can send my old locomotive in fact I'll, 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 I'll pull it over my other locomotive in a second I'll just let it go back round and then I'll pull it up and show you what I thought about what I'm talking about it's just on its way round now so this, this locomotive I've had it for so many years in fact I've not run it it's probably this is probably the first time I've run it for about I don't know five or six years so let's just swing it round so you guys can see it as you can see it's in the background there I'll just focus it in for you and it's pretty much a very a very similar locomotive it's, there's the only thing that's different about it is the actual uh, I'll try to focus it here it's the actual number in fact I'm going to whip it off the track I'm just going to pop it right up close here so we can get a close up on it so let me just put it on my um, programming track here so we can get to see what it looks like so there we go so that, that's the original 110 that I've got um, as you can see it's, it's um, it's slightly different colour on the top here. This is this is a bit more like metally silver, whereas that one, the one on that one, is pretty dark. If, if you compare the two, but and the shape, the, the face of the shape on this one here, is more straight up. Where that one on the back is concave, it kind of like pulls back more. There is a slight difference. Very, it's only very slightly different, but. You can pretty much see, let me just move my camera parallel so you can actually see when, when it lines up with them both straight. So you can see what I'm talking about there, There's, this one's more straight up and that one leans back a bit. So what, what, what I'm planning on doing is sending my 110 back to the, to, to, to the uh, modelling shop um, where I purchased the National Express from. And I'm going to get them to try my body of this 110, um, the 1559 on the chassis of the um, of the 469 and if that works then what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy another one and then use this uh, original analog one with with the different running numbers on it because Fleischmann don't do different running numbers on the locos they sell the same loco with the same running number you can't get it with a different number on it which is a little bit disappointing really you think they'd make four or five different variation numbers or something so you could collect more than one model it would make more sense and it's a bit of a fiddly process to try and put your own number in, especially on these, and they're very hard to get hold of. Um, and with the language difference between England and Germany, even though I speak fluent German, it's still quite difficult to understand because I can't read and write German. I'm, I'm illiterate to that. I can only speak the language having worked there, which is a bit of a shame, really. I should have made more of an effort. But with regards to just trying to get the loco, um, you, you see where I'm coming from. It just, if, if it'll work, the smoothness of that new engine which is up to date and the actual sound chip inside it if i can get the the, the the chassis to swap onto the old top then i'll be very happy and i'll have two decent new locos so that's it really um that's basically the new 110 that i've got and i'm quite looking forward to the um to the coaches when they actually come because um i'm sure that uh, let me just pop this back again I'm sure that uh, once once the coaches come, which have got like they've got a decoder in them as well, but there's only a set of three National Express coaches. It's a bit similar to the silver ones I've got here. Basically, you're going to have like three coaches. Let me just focus these, and you, so you can see the back one there. It's going to be like the silver coaches at the back there. When I can focus it in, there we go. So it's going to have that that colouring at the back, but it'll it'll be in the same colour as this blue and blue and white and red on there, whereas this is the silver. But it's this very similar coach, um, and it's got the colour coding at the back. Right, let me just move this forward so you can see, and we can get a close up on the silver coach. Coach up so you can see, and I'll show you a picture off the, uh, off the magazine so you can see what I'm talking about. Right, so just focus this in. As you can see at the end there, 
It's got the um, the four doors and the cabin at the back, which is identified by the colour coding at the end. Well, the new set, it's kind of similar to that. The back end has got that um, that, that that small line up the side, which dictates it's a cabin at the end of the uh, at the end of the um, the coach itself. And they're, they're doing that. Let me just grab the booklet and I'll drop it in front of you guys so you can see what I'm talking about. Hopefully this will show up on the video. So, just uh, just bring the camera up and then focus it in. So this is this is the actual um, the wagon that I'm on about, or the coach. Um, and then there's the two coaches similar to that, which are here, obviously. Let's just pull my camera back a bit so you can see that. Fantastic camera work, my foot. So sadly. They've only actually got three 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 coaches, so you can see the the, the loco is there, but um, that's the end the end coach, and uh, the other two, which are there. So I'm I'm still waiting for them to come through, but obviously once they come, then I'll have that I'll have a complete set then, which is what this is all about really, just to have a bit of a, a different a different sort of set. It's a three piece with the with the loco. So that's it really. That's um, that's the new loco. Again, it's it's. I'm really happy. It's um, sound-wise fantastic. Uh, let me just get ourselves back into focus here. Pull the loco back for the last shot. And there you go, the new Flyspring National Express 1110 sound locomotive. So if you've got any questions guys, do you want to know anything, um, it's a private, it's not, it's a private, obviously private company, it says that with National Express on the side of it. Um, it's actually, the, the company that are running these locos run out of Dusseldorf. I think it was 2016 when they bought the rights to do that. So they're like push-pull coaches, they provide, um, they provide cover for Rhine Westfarland. That's that's where this locomotive runs. So through the Rhine Valley, etc. Um, and I'm sure we'll see a lot more of this and this type of locomotive from Flashman in the future, bringing on more private stuff with, with coach sets and stuff like that. Hopefully, um, and that that's one thing they've lacked, if anything, um, the, the, the sets that they make. There's not not really adequate size wise, you can't really have five or six or seven coaches, that's the only problem unless you buy two sets, but then you end up with two end wagons that are no good to man or the beast. But um just wish that you change that. But anyway, enough of my rabbit in and uh I'll just bring round my other loco which is which is running in the background so you can see that before I finish. Because this is a rather nice loco as well. It's um it's a one a one eleven and not a one ten, but again it's a private loco. But it's got a rather nice colour scheme on it, and it's very similar to um, it's very similar to what we've got in the AA. This is the German equivalent of the AA. It's called ADAC. So let me just pop it around there and focus it in. So you can see it's really nice colour on it. It's got four people on it, and it's uh, it's it still carries a DB logo, but instead of in the middle of the loco, it's actually on the edge of the this side of the, the loco itself. But what this is representing is that they they cover repair work on on major roads. You'll see there it says ADAC. That's a bit like our AA, RAC, our green flag. It's the equivalent of that, but it's the German equivalent basically. But this loco itself, it's really nice. It's again, it's this is DCC, but it's not sound. It's really tempting to do the same thing with this and buy another National Express, but then it'll be too much the same. So I'll probably just keep that as it is and um, not bother with that one. But the pantograph work on that model is slightly more intricate on the top here. You'll notice there's a lot of um, uh, where, where the power. Um, pottery stuff is on the top 
whereas on these here these have just got a single cable that runs from one pantograph along the top going through the various um, supports on the top whereas that has got multiple supports on the top with various various wires actually going from one to the other so there's a lot more intricate work on the top of that one again with the um, with the other 110 that I've got here um, this this has also got very similar to um, the other 110 there the the, the, the the NX one the only difference is, is that the metal boxing on the top is more silvery whereas that one's more grey but you can see the intricate uh, rivets along the top as well and there's like a, an air vent on the top where there isn't on that other one so the, you know there is there's a lot of variation between them hence why it'd be nice to get um, a sound and up-to-date smooth motor because this one's quite old now and it does need needs a lot of maintenance all the time because it's such an old locomotive in fact it's probably the parts inside are starting to get really old that's that's the downside with having locos from the 80s at DCC or FMZ as it was known in them days but in, in general all the pantograph work on all the locos is fantastic from Fleischmann it really stands out well um, let me just let me just move that um, so you can see the one at the back the RBH which I did a video on recently that was my last video you'll see again the pantograph work on the top it's really good and, and the pantographs are all unique to all these locals they're all they're all like they're like single ones they're like doubles on the 110s and the 111s and, and it's true as to the model so it's really good to see that they've, they've made a good copy of what, what what the actual loco look like which is fantastic anyway that's enough for me rabbiting um it's quite a long video now i didn't want to make it this long but it was just it was all really about the um the national express which again i i i can't recommend this locomotive any more than than just by warranting the fact that i'd replace my other one same with another one of these which isn't a cheap a cheap option either you know it's quite expensive to do that it's another it's another 190 quid and then the cost of you know replacing whatever because the, the speaker might well be on the um, on the national express cover which will need taking off and vice versa putting on the, the old cover so we'll have to see if it's cost effective to do it if not i won't be doing it but if you've got any questions or you're not sure about anything or you, you, anything you want to know please let us know on the bottom and give us a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe i keep harping on about my modular system that's that's very very soon i'm going to start that with spring coming along so uh, look out for videos coming with that hopefully i'll start I'm, I'm not quite sure whether to do live videos on that or whether to do um whether to do like a video and then post it give, give me give me some feedback on the bottom on this video and let me know what you like to see and then you know I'll, I'll make a decision coming forward in the future with regards to how i'm going to model it and and how i'm going to decorate it and make it look lifelike anyway thanks for listening to me rabbit and uh, catch you all on my next video thank you bye bye